Hey guys, Morten Henning from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, we are taking a look at the cloth brushes inside of Blender and how you can use them to enhance your work that you've done in something like Marvelous Designer, or even if you've simulated cloth inside of Blender. This is gonna be a really exciting one. So let's jump right into Marvelous Designer and Blender. Okay, to start out with, we're just taking a look at Marvelous Designer. This is usually what people use to make more advanced clothing. So I just wanted to quickly show you how it works in terms of the scale, because that's something people often get confused about. When I imported this mesh here, I imported it in meters, uh, because that's what, um, that's what Blender works with. So if you import this by default, it'll say something like uh, millimeters or centimeters. If you do meters, you're just sure that it's the same scale, which means that once you export out your fabric like this, let's do this, OBJ selected, let's do Cape 002, and you'll get this dialog box. And here on the scale, you can just change it from the millimeter default to meter. Just leave the scale at 100. And for this example, I'm gonna go single object so there's no thickness. And I'm gonna weld all the seams together. Now back in Blender, let's go and import our clothing. So we have our cape, 002, and you can see that it just, it fits perfectly. Scale is one of those things that's always a little bit confusing um, for people going in and out of Marvelous. So just keep this in mind when, when you're working on your projects. So this is what we got straight out of Marvelous. It's a basic, I don't know, wizard's cape for our genocidal alien here. And what we wanna do is we wanna use the sculpting clothes brushes in Blender to add some more, let's call it artistic detail. So to start with, I'm just gonna give it a little more resolution. And I'll apply that. And then we'll go into sculpt mode. And this is what we have. So let's go to the cloth brush. And if you hit the end key, get your little item menu out here, go to tool. And these are some bespoke things we can change just for the cloth brushes. So as you probably know, you know, there are different kinds of brushes here. And we'll go through a few of them and, and what I like and where I find them the most useful. So to start off with, we'll just leave it at the, the drag brush. This is what you know, is the default. And we'll start dragging around on our mesh and see what it does. So what I like it for is compressing areas like, like this, for example. Oh, let's just turn off symmetry. So compressing areas like this, where you want things to sort of bunch up together. Now, one of the tricky things with this is that it's not in any way a replacement for normal cloth simulation. So it sort of treats everything within the object as, okay, I'm gonna do something here. I look at everything else to figure out what happens here. It also doesn't really take um, collision objects into account. So you kind of have to work around that. So there are some restrictions to this compared to normal simulation. This is like the number one question we've been getting. Does this replace Marvelous entirely? And uh, no. No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's see what we can do with the drag brush here. Um, so normally I would go in and I would start dragging things around a little bit, smooth them out. Maybe, let's see, decrease the intensity of the smooth brush, go back to the cloth brush. And then using a smaller radius for the drag brush, maybe just drag some of these in, smooth them out a little bit and see what we can get. Uh, for example, here, what I had in mind was maybe, maybe he'll have some sort of emblem or something that uh, is tied here at the front. So we can go back out, let's create a cube. I think it's pretty important to smooth it afterwards as well, because otherwise you're gonna have such crazy high frequency details in that area. Yeah. And it's gonna look really weird. A cloth doesn't really do that unless you have something like silk in, in very specific uh, situations. Yeah, it's it's one of the harder things, I guess, is, is sometimes working with the cloth brushes. Like you don't want too much detail everywhere. So you kind of want to be a little bit mindful of what it actually does to your fabrics. What I've seen happen is that people will assume that these tools are magic bullets and they're not. These tools re very much require artistic skills still. So next along, we'll use the push brush. 
And one of the things I like about the push brush, if you just look at this by default, right, it sort of pushes in and it increases everything around that point. As with all other brushes, you can give this a negative effect if you hold down control, right? So it bunches up in the opposite direction. So on an area like this, we can use the push brush to create more tension. So let's say we wanted the cape to be a lot tighter. So if we come in here, hold down control, then we draw out, then we can see we can we can see we start getting wrinkles that sort of correspond to the shape of of what we have here. We'll drag it out a little bit more and we'll do the same on the other side. Obviously, he's like Count Dracula, so we want to try and, and, and fix this a little bit. We can do that with the smooth brush, a combination of the smooth brush and maybe the regular uh, drag brush as well. Let's do that. Cloth is really hard to sculpt, and that's why that's why it's a really good idea to start with a base from Marvelous, because then you don't need one-to-one -one reference with what you're doing, because you get natural faults due to how procedural it is. But once you are doing the sculpting by hand or semi-procedural like you're doing now, it's a really good idea to find some general reference, because you 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 do not not you don't know what cloth looks like <laughs> unless you've been doing that a crazy amount. Whenever I do anything for a cloth project, I dress up in <laughs> whatever I need to, and I have Morton take photos, <laughs> just because I, I just do not know how to sculpt cloth properly without proper reference. Yeah, it's cloth always behaves in, it's called predictable ways. There are certain, depending on the type of fabric that you have and, and the length and you know the mass of it, you can always sort of figure out what cloth will do. So if you start studying clothes and, and how things fold, then you can quickly build up a library of how things will look like. Even just like getting to your starting point here for Marvelous, that would take me quite some hours just to sculpt. I would need a lot of reference for that. And I would need to just sculpt very clean and nice shapes, which is why it's nice to use tools where they are really strong. In, in this case, using Marvelous to get the base and to really get something which looks natural and then using the, um, the clothing brushes and blender to add details to that and really making the original shapes shine and just look, it will just look, it will just look, look a lot nicer that way. This is the kind of workflow that I usually do if I'm sculpting cloth nowadays, where I'll start off by simming it in Marvelous, and then you can take it into something like a Blender or ZBrush with their cloth brushes. And then for example, a point like this, where we use the push brush, we go in with um, the Draw Sharp or Damien Standard in ZBrush, and we just sort of enhance it a little bit. We use what the simulation gives us as a starting point to sort of fan out from, give us some more broad, I guess more generic kind of wrinkles. We get rid of some of the high frequency detail, but we're sort of left with an overall flow, a direction to to our wizard cape here. It's usually, it's usually a good idea to enhance your, uh, your marvelous stuff in something like Blender or ZBrush. Just because what you get might get out of Marvelous can look a bit procedural. It can look a bit like just purely simulated. Yeah. So it can be nice to use your artistic skills to art direct some of the folds a little bit. And then um, I like this brush as well, the pinch perpendicular, especially for areas like this. So the pinch perpendicular just goes perpendicular to your brush direction. So here you can see it starts to pinch things together like this. If I go this way, it'll start to pinch like that. If we decrease the intensity, I found with a, I find with a lot of the clothing brushes, if you just uh, decrease the intensity, you can get some broader strokes in there where you avoid a lot of that uh, noisy detail, but then actually, you know, you get to have some bigger shapes that have a lot of variation to them. Like here, for example, where you have folds that go down, you don't necessarily want it to just go straight down. With, with the pinch perpendicular, you can kind of create secondary shapes within it and then maybe smooth it out a little bit to get a more stylized or defined look if you want. So something, something like that maybe. And then for something like this hood, for example. Now, this hood is a great showcase a great showcase for both the push brush and the inflate brush. So with the push brush, if you go in, it's 
just does what it says, it pushes on the fabric. So I'll make this brush a little bit smaller and then I'll start pushing in here again with a low intensity, maybe a little higher. And then I can start creating these secondary forms that's a lot more interesting than what you just have here. And these brushes in general work, I find better on meshes with some kind of um, surface variation already present in the mesh. Like if you go down here and you start using the push brush, it's not very interesting because it's only interacting with sort of a flat plane. But up here, uh, you can use it to create just a little bit more detail, just create some subtle wrinkles in your in your fabrics. So are these brushes a magic bullet? No, they're not. Will they en enhance your workflow if you're using them where they are strong? Absolutely they will. Yeah, and it's that's key to keep in mind also going forward with technology. We hear this all the time. Whenever a new tool comes out, people always rage about like this, this is finally going to be the replacement to XYZ's you know, software and this, this is going to kill this software. But at the end of the day, most of these tools are just that they're just tools. They aren't full replacements. They're meant to be used as auxiliary um, things for for your asset creation, character creation, whatever it is, they're not meant as full replacements. I could see this working really well if you have uh, some kind of background props, like some pillows, a sofa, or maybe like a bag of beans or <laughs> something oddly <laughs> specific like that. Yeah, especially for inanimate looking objects, I guess. I mean, all cloth is kind of inanimate unless it's a ghost, I guess. But trash bags mm -hmm. in particular, uh, cushions maybe could be a good contender as well. Like take, take the hood, for example, now that we've switched to the inflate brush, you have a regular inflate brush, which just, you know, expands the vertices out from each other. The nice thing about the cloth inflate brush is that it kind of, it does the same thing, but it sort of also simulates at the same time. So you can totally change the feel, the look and feel of your fabric. Like this right now looks like a thin piece of fabric, um, maybe cotton, um, which is fairly heavy, but it's, it's very thin. If you go in with the inflate brush now, just lightly go over, especially the thinner parts, you can see that we can start adding a lot of mass and a lot of weight to the hood here while again retaining the sort of look that we've created and it's still simming everything so we get some nice additional details there we go but we're also adding thickness to it so instead of having something that felt thin and lacked volume maybe now you have something more akin to a trash bag on the back of his neck for example you can go in and do that here as well. Just create a little more volume to it, go in and smooth it out. Really back and forth. And, and most of the time, I find that a smaller brush size is a lot easier to control. You know, something in this area, for example, you still have the dotted line and the gray line on the outside of the orange, which is just, it defines the boundary for your sim. So if you know, if you go outside that sim, it starts to go red. So it won't simulate outside of that. But you can get away with a lot, even with a smaller looking brush. Just don't forget sculpting principles. <laughs> yeah, there is there is that as well. So and definitely combine this, the cloth brushes, like we mentioned earlier, with the regular brushes like the draw sharp or the draw brush, the grab brush. You can combine these in a lot of different ways to get really cool results. And one thing I just wanted to take a look at here, let's go back with the push brush just real quickly. Let's create some secondary detail in here. Just up the intensity. I like the push brush, especially for area like areas like this, because it creates a, a lot of nice sort of secondary detail. Okay, ignore that part. And then you can go in with the expand brush. Now the expand brush itself, I don't really find it that useful. I just kind of like an inflate brush without going out in volume that much and it just goes outwards. But you can use it like the negative part of it. So if you hold down control and go over an object, it sort of smooths out the object while retaining kind of the volume of the object. So you can sort of go back to what you had before with less details, but still 
you know, keeping part of the volume there, maybe going and smooth it out a little bit as well. So definitely play around with these brushes, try the negative part of them, try the regular non, I guess the positive part of them and see what kind of results you, you come up with. For me, the drag brush is great. I really like the pinch perpendicular and the inflate brush. Those are the brushes that um, I found myself using the most. So that about just covers everything. Uh, I mean, obviously we can go a lot more in depth with these, but just as a quick introduction on how you can work with these with pre-existing clothing from something like Marvelous, I think this gets you started. So if you wanna see more content like this, sculpting in Blender using the cloth brushes or other brushes, for example, uh, just let us know in the comments and uh, we'll see you next time.